Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever been more disappointed to hear, are you ready, ladies, and then you saw this? <laughs> All right, thanks, Holly, for teeing that up for me. Okay, um, the majority of my time today, I'm gonna talk about my close personal friend, George, and how we met. Uh, see, it was a, a beautiful Burbank sunny day, and, and I was driving my car, and I was at a red light, and up alongside me, in a convertible, uh, drove up George Clooney, and, and he, <laughs> You know, he was looking all Clooney, you know, like he, uh, he woke up 10 minutes ago, somehow he's got it all together. Some guys have that. You have that, sir. We're, we're happy for you that you have that. I, I don't have that. Anyway, um, I was uh, talking on the cell phone with my mother, because I'm a good son. Uh, and that was legal at the time, by the way. I don't want to paint myself a bad boy here right out of the gate. Um, so I, I was talking to my mom, and I decided I need to do the phone switcheroo, because the Clune is out in the open air, and I'm in my 2001 Saturn, and so I decided to, to lower the window on my 2001 Saturn. And if you've ever been in a 2001 Saturn, you know that nothing on it is quiet. So when, when the window lowered, it was just sounded like a cat dying, you know? Meow! And, um, and I was busted. And George looks at me and he says, uh, who are you talking to? I thought, I thought, I'm talking to my mom, telling her I'm looking at you. And he smiled at me and he said, say hello to mom for me. <laughs> and then he drove off. It was so cool. It was such a cool moment, but all in an instant, it came crashing down because I realized at that moment that he possessed it. He had this intangible thing that you can't quite put your finger on that's just cool, and I wanted it. I, was very, I mean, here I was, this actor on the rise. I just got done doing 45 seconds on Cold Case. I mean, things were happening for me, people, but I wanted what he possessed, not just as an actor, but as a, a human being. So I went home to my very spacious 200 square foot apartment and I did some soul searching about what it is, right? And I found out that there are two and a half things that George Clooney has that we can possess in our everyday lives. It's true. The first thing I like to call the gift. Everybody I've ever met who's had an encounter with George Clooney says the same thing about George Clooney. They say he makes you feel like the most important person in the room. And if you are regularly making people feel like the most important person in the room, eventually you become the most important person in the room because people are just drawn to that. Now, it doesn't take much. For George Clooney, it took 13 seconds of his time to make me feel like the most important person in the room. And I'm going to show you right now just how easily we can make people feel like the most important person in the room. So those of you playing the home game, here's your assignment. I want you to get your cell phones out. I know they were out already, don't con me. I know they're out, okay? So get it out and get your text machine ready to text your best friend. That's your assignment. For those of you in here, I want you to look at the nearest person to you and on the count of three, we're going to say and you're going to text, you're freaking awesome. Are you ready? Three, two, one. You're freaking awesome, yeah. It feels good, doesn't it? You feel important after you hear that. Now, I, I did trick you because for those, the person you just friggin' awesomed is, is now your importance buddy. You're gonna hold each other accountable to making other people feel in, important. And so in order to do that, we're gonna take the importance oath. So please repeat after me. I, your name here. Well, there's always a your name here, right? Do solemnly swear. I can't hear you at home, okay. Uh, that I will uphold my commitment to importance with my importance buddy, except I really won't, as I'm only doing this because I have to. But someday I'll have a beer with my importance buddy and laugh at the ridiculousness of this oath. On second thought, I'll have a vodka soda as I'm trying to cut carbs. Okay, fantastic. Now you have importance buddies. You have somebody to be accountable to. The second thing that George had was the connect. Now, to be fair to George, the connect for him is easy. He's an international superstar. That's what I connect to him. For most of us, it's a little harder to create that connect, but somebody here does it awesome every time she speaks. When Holly Hoffman takes the stage, you know Holly Hoffman takes the stage because she is wearing... 
she's wearing red. That's a signature color. You know when she walks in the room. That's a stamp that she leaves behind. How else can you do that? Well, you could have a, a different size business card that doesn't quite fit in the wallet, so they'll have to like pull it out and put it someplace special, right? You might have a particular brand of shoe. You might have the awesome candy dish at your office, and I'm not talking about that Smarties crap. You bring the noise with the Kit Kats. You know what I'm talking about? That might be your signature. See, I, I discovered one of my connects accidentally. See, when I was a single guy and at the bars, I was competing against handsome men who have done peck work. I have not done that work. Um, underneath here, well, I, I, I can't legally show you what's underneath here. Um, and I can't even describe it in words. It's, it's like a sound when you, when you see it, it's like, Whoa, like what is that? Like all the parts seem to be in the wrong spot or something. I don't, I don't know, I don't need to go off too far on that. But you know, a guy who's done peck work here, right? Yeah, yeah, like you, like you can have the button down. Yeah, you sir, yes sir, millennial, yes. Um, you can have the button down. So you really at the bar, you can just like button one button, let the rest hang out, that deep V thing. And if I go deep V versus deep V, I lose every time. So I would wear uh, goofy t-shirts to the bar, and one of my favorites was a Dolly Parton t-shirt. And it was glorious, one of these 1980s prints that like goes too far, it's like Dolly just kind of kept on going, right? It was a magical shirt. And one night, I'm at the bar, and I'm talking to this girl in a Burberry scarf, and I thought things were going pretty well, but towards the end of the night, she gave me the brush, it's fine, it's a, it's a move I was pretty familiar with. Um, anyway. The next morning, I got an email from a friend of mine who was not at the bar with us that night. It's a very important detail to this story. This friend who emailed me was not with us. And the email just said, hubba hubba. And then there was a link to Craigslist misconnections. Anybody familiar with Craigslist misconnections? Okay, if your hand is down, you are normal. Um, Craigslist uh, misconnection. Take the creepiness you know Craigslist is. Go ahead and crank her up a notch to Craigslist misconnection. It's a place where people who maybe passed on the street thought they just had a little, you know, you can post on there and say, do you feel that magical connection? And, and it really is a creepy site, but I had an older computer. I figured I could risk virus, so I clicked on the link. I popped open and it said, um, dear guy in Dolly Parton t-shirt, it's me, girl, in Burberry scarf. And I thought to myself, my goodness, my connect was accidentally so strong that a friend of mine who was not there knew that this was me. So I quick called up my friend. I said, how did, how did you know this was me? And she said, Jack, you're the only straight guy in the five state area with a Dolly Parton t-shirt. It had to be you. And I said, okay, quick follow up what were you doing on Craigslist Misconnections? You know, never, never really got the answer there, but the point is oh, we had a stamp, something to remember us by. The final thing that George had is mystery, and I call it a half lesson, because it's really hard to teach mystery. I'll give you one quick trick, but sometimes mystery just happens, like with George and I, in the 13 seconds we were together, I was, I was fast forwarding our lives as best friends. I was wondering what that was, you know, like was I gonna go to his place in Cabo or, or was he gonna come over to play video games with my roommates? What was the dynamic of our best friendship gonna be? And then whoosh, he was gone. He left me with that last impression wanting just a little bit more. So next time the world settles down and we actually can get together for some networking things, here's a little mystery tip. Always be the first person to leave the conversation. You can use all two and a half of what we've learned here today, right? You can say, you know what, this was a great conversation, importance, right? I feel like we connected on a lot of things, the connect, but I gotta go, can I get your card? And then disappear, make that last impression. And if you think that's not important, I present to you Cliff Clavin from Cheers. It's a little known fact, as he used to like to say on the show, right? It's a little known fact that Cliff Clavin, John Ratzenberger, auditioned for the part of Norm. And by his own admission, did a terrible job. And on he, as he was on his way out the door, he just thought, I'm gonna make one last impression because I'm not gonna get this part anyway. He said, you know what this script needs? This script needs a lovable idiot who sits at the bar, thinks he knows everything, but doesn't know anything. Every bar has got one of those, standard issue. And that's what this script needs. And he left. And the producers looked at each other and they said, that's exactly what this script needs. The character of Cliff Clavin was born and he never even auditioned for the part. And so with that, I'd just like to say, you've been a great audience. <laughs> I feel like we connected on a lot of things here. <laughs> but I gotta go, can I get your card? Can I get your card? Can, can you still see me, mystery, mystery? Okay. okay, well since you can see me anyway here, I do wanna, uh, I have a little more time, and I wanna address the elephant in the room, or to be cheesy here, the elephant in the Zoom. 
Because <laughs> people are doing a whole bunch of things when it comes to virtual and online, and here's a couple little demo things that I, I, uh, I want to show you. So here I am in front, of course, of a, a screen, and anybody can do that, great. But what I do in my studio, which is a fancy word these days for basement, uh, is I set up different tripods throughout my basement. So when I'm telling a story that has some significance, even in a live meeting, I can move us to a new location where maybe we'll go to the lounge. I encourage your attendees to make a little mocktail, maybe a cocktail. Okay, maybe not a cocktail, who cares? They're not wearing pants, the rules are out the window. If we pre-record this, which I highly, highly, highly recommend, we can do some picture in picture, and you can put me in different locations. I had a client say, you know, Jack, our people are officing out of the strangest places of their homes. One person was even in their bathroom, and I said, say no more. So we shot a scene in my basement bathroom. You can see the curtain there uh, behind me there, and uh, that's Weird Al Yankovic's guitar. I get to decorate the basement bathroom. Bathroom, okay, so that's, that's a lot of fun. But that reminds me of another thing I want to point out is the one hour keynote, we don't need to be leashed to that in a virtual world. In fact, what I'm recommending to clients is we do four 10 minute TED Talks and you spread them out however you need them in your meeting because Zoom fatigue is real, friends. It's very, very real. So let's keep the action moving. The final thing that I'm doing is I've layered on a full serve element to what I do for you. So I've been doing a lot of hosting. This is me with Midwest Energy Association. They had a pool table. I had some fun with that. And what I do for clients in that case is I take the writing completely off of your plate. You tell me what's next and what sponsor I have to name, and I insert my Japanese right in there and make it really fun for your attendees. Listen, I get it. A lot of people are punting on 2020, and I understand putting on a virtual meeting is new and it's scary, but I think you only feel that way because you haven't seen it done well, and I promise you I'll be a partner to make it happen because meetings are more important than ever, because that breakout content, every industry is changing so quickly, that breakout content that's usually a snoozer is really important right now, and if I can bring some levity and some fun to bring the program and move it along, I'd be thrilled to be part of that. Okay, with that, my time is done, but...